just got back from Hot Rod Arama, which was an epic road trip and a great event. In fact, I made a video of it. I'll put it in the link and uh, right up here somewhere. And my truck has been sitting in my driveway. And I came out the other day and I noticed a big shiny spot. So I crawled up under there to see where the leak was coming from. And it's coming from the speedometer cable attachment deal thingy on the transmission. There was a small leak there before, but now after 500 miles, it's, yeah, it's leaking pretty bad. So let's see if we can figure out what's wrong with it and let's see if we can fix it. First things first, you gotta remove your speedometer cable and you can just use some pliers to kind of wiggle that loose. It should be just snugger than hand tight. Get that up out of the way. Now we need to remove this retainer and that's just a 10 millimeter bolt. Now you can use your same pliers to kind of wiggle this thing out of here, but be advised there will be fluid that will come out. So have a bucket ready. Come on, baby. Oh, told you there's fluid in there. So first thing you want to check is this O-ring here. I don't see any tears or anything like that. And there was no sign of fluid coming out from here. It was all coming out from here. So that O-ring looks pretty good, but I mean, you might as well replace it while you're at it. But the other thing you want to look for is this seal right in here. That's where it seals when you put that gear in there and there's no resistance at all. So it feels like that seal might be your problem. And then the other thing you want to look for is a groove on your gear because sometimes this being plastic, you know, spinning so fast going down the highway, it actually cuts a groove. This one does look a little worn out. They sell these seal kits on eBay for pretty cheap. I mean, I think they're like 15 bucks or so. Or you can do like I did and just go down to your local transmission shop. The guy actually had these laying around and he just gave them to me for free. Well worth the trip down there. And all it is is the seal that goes around the gear that your speedometer cable actually plugs into and the o-ring that goes around the housing nine times out of ten it's that little tiny seal inside of there that's held in by that snap ring that fails it just gets worn out and needs to be replaced all you got to do is get yourself a little pointer pry bar thingy and then you can just kind of slowly start to work that snap ring out of there you want to be careful you don't scratch up the aluminum so then after you pop the old seal out, you can install the new seal. And you'll see your seal has two sides to it. There's this side, and then there's the side that has the cone shape to it. You'll also see there's numbers on there. Number side faces out, so it goes in just like that. And if you need to lubricate it just a little bit, you can do that as well. Use some spit or some tranny fluid, but it should just slide right in there. So we're gonna just kind of press it down in there. You don't want to poke into the seal. Just kind of want it seated down in there, just like that. Take our snap ring again. Just like that. So long as it's all the way seated down in there, you should be good to go. So now we just need to replace this O-ring here. You just kind of pinch it until it gets up like that and then you can get your tool in there. So I'm gonna clean this up before I install the new O-ring and just kind of hit it with some brake cleaner. So now we'll go ahead and install our new O-ring. Just like that, bada bang. So I showed the transmission guy this gear and he seemed to think it was good to go so I didn't need a new gear and it definitely holds in place. So let's go ahead and install this on the truck. So when you install this, you wanna put a little bit of oil in these oil grooves on the gear. You can just use some of the oil that's already in your transmission. Then you also wanna put just a little thin layer of oil on this O-ring so that it slides in there a little bit easier. And it might be a little bit tight since this is a new O-ring, but that's good, you want it tight. Now we have to get this housing clocked in there correctly so that the speedometer gear actually engages with the gear that's on the shaft. And that's actually what this bracket is for, to make sure you're in the right position. If you can't turn it by hand, use your channel locks or your pliers and just kind of gently twist it until it gets right in the right spot where you can reinstall the bolt. 10 millimeter, kind of hand tighten this down using the old hand torque. There we go. So now we'll make sure to clean out our speedometer cable and then you can reinstall that as well. Hand tight and then just give it a couple snugs with your pliers and you're good to go. So at this point you're going to want to drive a little bit so you can warm up your transmission so you can check your fluid level. 
you want to check your transmission fluid level hot to get an accurate reading. So after you've driven for a little bit and you've gotten it up to temperature about 160 or more with your car running, you want to shift through all of the gears, pausing in each gear a few seconds to let the oil kind of get into all the little galleys and stuff. And then leave it running, put it in park and clean off your dipstick tube and then check your level while it's running. You'll notice on your dipstick there is a hot level and then a bunch of X's. Anywhere in those X's is the safe zone. You don't want to overfill it, but you definitely don't want to run it too low. You can see it's below the X's. So I'm actually going to add just about a half a quart. Now we're in the X's. And when you fill it, you just dump the oil down the filler tube. And that can also cause a false reading because sometimes there's oil in the tube that can get on your dipstick. So after driving it a little while, we'll make sure to check the fluid level again just to be sure that we're in that safe zone. So now I'll drive it for a few days and keep an eye on it and I'll check back in with you to see if this actually fixed our problem. All right, so it's been a little over a week and I've driven this thing 100 miles, maybe a little over 100 miles or so. So let's crawl underneath it and see if we fixed our leak. And as you can see, there is not a drop of tranny fluid on this Speedo cable. So I think we're good. So if this helped you out at all, make sure you hit that like button and hit the social media stuff down there. Check out the t-shirts and stuff over here. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you on the next one.